Mondays and the United States Open have become synonymous in recent years. As Curtis Strange found out one Monday in June in Brookline, Massachusetts, when he beat Nick Faldo in a playoff. And last year at Medina, after 18 holes, on the 19th, Hale Irwin beat Mike Donald. Yesterday, Payne Stewart had to watch. Scott Simpson had this putt for bogey to tie. For the fourth time in the last seven years, America's national championship will be decided on a Monday. ABC Sports and the United States Golf Association proudly present the playoff for the 91st U.S. Open Golf Championship. And this is how it was at 12.30 Central Daylight Time at Hazel T. National Golf Club on the first hole, Payne Stewart. He was very relaxed in the locker room, Roger. He was getting a rub down and still wearing that back brace. It's actually an elastic uh, thing, not a metal fitting piece of equipment. And Payne hit his tee shot right down the middle of this par four. Now, Scott Simpson. Thought he was very relaxed, too. He was talking to Payne. Their lockers are in the same area of the locker room, talking to him about uh, going to the Irish Open this week. Payne Stewart's going to play in Killarney this week. They both seem very calm about the whole situation. Neither one's ever been in an 18-hole playoff before. Simpson also hit it right down the middle at the first hole, but David, his second shot went into the back bunker. And this is the third shot for Scott Simpson. Get in the hole! That's got to be a little sign of nervousness there, Roger. That is not a very good shot. I know it wasn't an easy shot by any means. He's going almost straight downhill, but that's not what you want to do on the very first hole. And from the same angle, Payne has his chip out of the tall grass. And this is his third shot. Oh! make his putt for par there at the first hole. He's made a lot of good par putts over the last couple of days. Now, this is Scott Simpson, this long putt for par. And these greens, David, are USGA fast today. I think the golf course is now the way they had it on Wednesday, just before the rains came. So, Simpson would make a bogey there, and he would be one back after the first hole. Now, the second hole, the Stewart putt for birdie from the fringe. And look at, you know, he's got the toe of the putter, which he's using, which is, we saw him do at 18 This yesterday. is the third time I've seen him do that that I can remember. He might have to start putting this way with this line putty in on this hole. <laughs> and he would make that putt for par at the second hole. Now, Scott Simpson, this is a putt for par. And slides by to the left, so... Simpson will bogey the first two holes. Now, we move to the fifth hole. Of course, the fifth hole, 412 yard par four. Second shot. They both parred three and four. Beautiful second shot there. I think on the most difficult pin position there. Anytime it's short, a lot of people think that's easy, but that is the smallest area to shoot to on the green. Now, this is the fourth shot for Payne Stewart at the par four fifth. Good bunker shot there. We haven't seen a lot of good bunker shots out of these bunkers this week. They've been a little harder to play than you usually see on tour. Of course, Payne made that for his bogey. Now Simpson for birdie. And we had a two-shot swing, and we're even after five holes. Now they would both par the sixth hole. Now at seven. 518-yard par five, Simpson for birdie. And 
Haynes Stewart would make his par as we come to the eighth tee, the par three. This has been a difficult hole all week. It's Dave. a great golf hole to, to not be overly long. Of course, when you've got water, bunkers, and wind, you've got it all. Well, look at that. Well, we saw that must have hit a rock or something. We saw Tom Perch the other day hit a rock near the water and bounce up on the green. Now, this is Scott Simpson, whose tee shot was long here, so neither player hit the green. Pin similar to where it was on Thursday during the opening round. And the similar results that you have there from behind there, it is very fast. And Simpson would miss that putt, and he would make bogey there. Now, this is Payne Stewart for par, and what a remarkable par this would have been after that tee shot. And it slips out of the cup. He would make it coming back. He would make his bogey. So Stewart at two over, Simpson at one over. Now, this at the ninth hole, par four, 432 yards. This putt for birdie. Right on line. Just to even it up. And you, all you can do is laugh about it sometimes. You hit it so good. Now, this would be Scott Simpson for par at the 10th hole, the par four. Downhill dogleg left, 410 yards. And he would miss that, and Payne Stewart would make his par there. And we now take you live to the 11th, 556-yard par 5. And Payne Stewart, who had a good tee shot, good second shot. But his third shot, David, obviously was not as good as he would like because this is his fourth shot. Well, I don't know what he did exactly there to, to finish here if he was in the fairway. Just uh, we have to assume, see how steep the slope yeah. is? He carried it on the green and brought it back off the green. That's uh, These greens are just so fast right now. Look at this roll. Still down. Hmm. Well, once you get up over the hill, then it starts away from you just a little bit. These players are even right now. And hi, everybody, and welcome to the Hazel T National Golf Club, along with David Marr. I'm Roger Twible. Glad you can be with us on a Monday. Hope you can take one more day of the excitement. We're looking forward to it, especially these closing holes here uh, at uh, Hazel T National, David, because the last two days, they've been a real nemesis for Scott Simpson at uh, 16, 17, and 18. Last two days, he's made two bogeys on Saturday and Sunday through those last three holes on each of the days. Well, according to form, it actually shouldn't have gone that way. Simpson's known more as a plotter and a very consistent player, and you would think he He'd be parring those holes while he did bogey 16 and 18 on both Saturday and Sunday. Payne Stewart, on the other hand, the rap against him can be that he doesn't finish very well, and in effect, he has finished very well the last uh, two rounds. Now, uh, somebody better have a lead going to 16, 17, and 18 today because you're going to need it. Well, they say there's no lead big enough as we take a look at Scott Simpson right now. This is for birdie at the 11th hole, and it just trickles by. Good recovery by Scott. So Scott Simpson will have that for his five. And Payne Stewart now will have this par putt. And we have watched Payne the last couple of days make a number of par putts, David, but a lot of the birdie putts of equal length or less he has not been able to get in the hole. But it was on the wrong side of the hole, too, uh, Roger. The, the thing that can happen to you in an open, you might hit an absolutely marvelous shot six feet above a pin like you did at 17 yesterday and have a putt that you really can't take a run at where if he were 10 feet below the hole, you'd have an easier putt. So, so much depends on the, where you, your ball finishes as to what you can try to do. Now, Payne Stewart, this putt for par. Keep this playoff even. Wonder how that caddy knows to stand right there, huh? They have an unusual knack for that, don't they? Yeah. There we go. I'm telling you, he, I, I, I would like, uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know, a couple dollars for every one of those he's made in the last two or three days. Par putts. Payne Stewart has been proficient at them. As a matter of fact, David, he's made more pars than Scott Simpson has. Yeah, again, week. that surprises me. Of course, this man has putted well all week. Mm -hmm. Talking about Scott Simpson. So Simpson makes his par, and through 11 holes, both are at plus two, even in this 91st U.S. Open Championship playoff. And now, let's go out to Bob Rosberg. Bob? Thank you, Roger. I'm out here with Judy Rankin, and we're going to be covering the last uh, seven holes. Judy, we had another change in the weather. 
Well, the wind is a very big factor today. It's from a different direction than when it ballooned the scores on Saturday, but it's really made the greens firm, and I believe they're faster than they've been all week. Well, they really are, and you saw the shot that Payne Stewart hit at eight. I thought that was a tremendous break he got there because it looked like he was going to make five and Payne and uh, Scott was going to make three, but it didn't turn out that way. They both made four, and uh, they're still tied up. So let's go back to Roger and Dave. Okay, thank you, Bob and Judy. And they move to the 12th hole, 432 yard par four. Nice hole into the wind today, uh, Roger. And it's sort of a wide open, gives you a feeling of a wide open drive. But actually, those trees are very reachable on each side there. Your second shot into this green. Now, today against the wind, uh, which is the prevailing wind here at Hazeltine, the green is a little bit elevated. Green is very firm here. You see the bunker right, bunker left, uh, very firm on the left hand side. Uh, this particular green, it's a very fine golf hole, slight dog leg to the right. David, a lot of the greens here elevated in the front, and then they kind of slope down to the middle and then elevated more toward the back, and you see the front pin position there. Well, it's, again, that's uh, the tough pin position here, and you can see how it's played during the tournament, 4.26. Just 33 birdies, 120 bogeys at that par four. One eagle. <laughs> yeah, one eagle. <laughs> Put that on your ringer score for the uh, Labor Day tournament. Well, it's uh, just a little past lunchtime here in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, but that's a clubhouse at uh, the Hazeltine National Golf Club. Uh, we're just a little over 20 miles outside of Minneapolis-St. Paul, and uh, the winds today, uh, they're projecting gusts up to 20, 25 miles per hour. As we move to the tee at 12, and Scott Simpson. We're told Payne Stewart has already hit and has driven it down the right side of the fairway at 12. And that has gone left and drop down into the rough, and there might even be a tree problem for the uh, second shot of Scott Simpson. These players are both two over, they're even, and the playoff of this 91st United States Open Championship at the Hazeltine National Golf Club in Chaska, Minnesota. Good, solid stroke. Two-shot lead for Scott Simpson as we go to 16. This 18-hole playoff for the 91st United States Open Championship. David, take it away. It's a great golf hole here, their signature hole. And it's 384 yards, as you see, but there's danger everywhere. They've got to carry to Lake Hazeltine there, creek down the left-hand side, then ash tree on the right if you're in the right third of the fairway. Uh, interferes a little bit with your second shot as you play into this green that is stuck out into the lake there. No bunkers on this hole at all. And of course, Lake Hazeltine right, back, and a little bit there on the left-hand side. Big green, but uh, not very wide. It was very deep. Now 41 birdies, 103 bogeys, 32 double bogeys, and 14 others. Scoring average of 4.40 and uh, one point in time, the scoring average there on Saturday was almost up to five. No, Saturday was the, the hard wind here, the northwest wind. Saturday, this putt, you think it might be for birdie? Well, you thought wrong. It was for par for Payne Stewart, and maybe the stroke of the tournament. Second, that guy, some guy in the gallery yelled, it breaks left, Payne. <laughs> Tee shot. This is Scott Simpson with a three wood on Saturday and just catches the rough and jumps into the real deep rough. And he would make bogey. Now Sunday, this was the one iron. He tried something different. Well, the hole was a little bit different yesterday. The wind wasn't the same as it was Saturday. David, nearly the same spot, a little, little farther. If you miss, that's the side to miss all. Don't miss to the right. Well, he made bogey there, so he's played the last three holes at five over par in the previous four rounds. So he told me yesterday, I said, what do you do about 16? He says, I just got to get it in the fairway one day. Well, you got to try to get that out of your mind, what, what you've done in the past. That, uh, forget that. Make a good golf swing here. Just put the ball in the fairway. 
Easy to say, hard yeah. to do. You won't see any woods today, David. A little bit hard driving too, Roger. There's no bunkering down there or anything to say. What what can you aim at? You aim at the big tree that you see. You don't aim to the water tower. That's too close to the right side of the fairway. Pick out one of those trees and just try to swing right toward it. Started a little left. Should be perfect. Good. Good shot. That is perfect. Left third of that fairway is ideal. See what Payne Stewart's done. He's played these last three holes at even par in the previous four rounds. He's made a par at this hole every day. Well, it stayed in the fairway, but he will have to throw his second shot up over the tree that overhangs the fairway on the right side. Scott Simpson, Payne Stewart have hit their tee shots at 16. Simpson leads by two in this 18-hole playoff. They welcome you back to Hazel Tee National Golf Club in Chaska, Minnesota, along with Judy Rankin, Bob Rosberg, Dave Marr. I'm Roger Twybell here this 18-hole playoff between Scott Simpson and Payne Stewart. Simpson, the Open winner in 1987 at Olympic. Stewart, who won the PGA in 89. And this is the 16th hole, the most difficult of the 18 holes here at Hazel T National. The pin cut all the way to the back. And Scott Simpson checking out his second shot. He has 172 yards to the hole, 136 to the front edge, and the pin is 36 back. The hole is cut there. Bob, what do you think he'll try to do? Do you think he'll try to get all the way back to where the pin is? Well, the wind's coming out of the left, David. I would think he would try to put it a little short of the flag and to the left of the flag, leaving himself maybe 25 feet. I, I think he would settle for that. That's exactly what he needed to do, Roger. Not to put the lake in play at all. Just put it on the green. Make Payne have to take a chance. Payne is 160 yards. Probably will take an eight iron. Throw it up over that tree. I don't think he can get there with a nine, although there's quite a bit of wind behind him. A little out of the left, but mostly behind. Of course, as we look at our picture here, Bob, it looks like he's almost under that tree. How much, uh, how much room does he have between, uh, between he and the hole? Uh, I mean, no, the, the, he, he's 50 the yards short of that tree, David. All right. So he left no problem getting it up over the tree. Kind of indicated he didn't realize the ball would check up on him quite that much. No, you don't when the, when the greens are, are firm. He's just played a number of hard greens in a row, 13, 14, 15. 
because that one was from the fairway. Huge gallery out here today. Very appreciative golf fans. I would say, David, you know, going back to last Monday, you're looking at 40,000 a day for seven days, and then now today out here, whatever they have, you know, well in excess of 300,000 for the week. Of course, he's got to try to hit a high shot here, talking about Payne Stewart. So he's aimed off to the left. You've got to go over the left. The wind is also left to right, so it's all going to help him move the ball back toward the uh, pin. That's an eight iron, good long swing. He'll try to stay back a little more than usual to get the ball up in the air. Don't make quite as strong a forward move into it. Have your hands finish nice and high. If you want to hit a high shot, have your hands finish up high. Low shot, your hands finish low. Simpson's putt is about 35 feet here, going up the hill a little but um, almost level. What about Payne, Bob? Payne has about 20 feet, uh, David. He's coming a l at a little better angle than, uh, than Scott. Uh, he's putting more up into the hill. He is definitely below the hole, and uh, this is one of the few times anybody's been below the hole today. Simpson will have that left for his par. At 16, a hold he has bogeyed the last two days. And now Payne Stewart. 6-1 putts, 8-2 putts. That's what he's had so far today. 23 putt, though, at the last hole. Right. That was almost a cinch, 3 yep. putt. Well, you think of Payne Stewart and you think of he's a little on the flamboyant side just because of uh, the way he dresses, uh, maybe a little bit of a gambler. But he's been the steady man in the sense of making pars and such, whereas Scott Simpson has made some birdies. We have to go back to yesterday at the third hole, par five, for the last birdie that Payne Stewart had. He's two shots back, this putt for birdie to pull within one with two holes left to go. must make Roger also very important if he could make it to get within a stroke and get to the honor on the par 3 17th. You call that in the back of the cup, David? Yes, sir. Reed. Cool. Sixteenth hole's been very good to Payne Stewart. Now, Scott Simpson with this short putt for par to maintain a one-stroke advantage going to 17.
two shot swing for the third time today. And we're even going to 17 in the playoff for the 91st United States Open Championship between Scott Simpson and Payne Stewart. Scott Simpson, Payne Stewart are even through 16 as they come to the par 317, playing 186 yards today. This is a brand new hole, Roger. It didn't exist in 1970. You can see the two lakes there. They really should not come into play. Two bunkers short of the green, two bunkers back right there to a green that slopes quite a bit from back to front. A lot of slope on this green. You get beyond the hole, it's very fast. Now, Saturday, this is the tee shot of Payne Stewart, and David, he's played this hole awfully well the last couple of days. He didn't make that birdie putt. And on Sunday, another beautiful tee shot by Payne Stewart. But once again, he couldn't convert the birdie. Payne has parred the last three holes, all four rounds. But not the fifth. Right, and that's where we're at. This hole is playing 186 today, and there's one thing you cannot afford to do here, and that's knock it over the green. The pin is way back, uh, hole cut uh, right in the back of the green. Anything over the green uh, is near impossible to get the ball anywhere near the hole. Stewart's made four pars here at 17. Simpson, two pars and two bogeys. And to make that scenario just a little bit more difficult, the front of this green is kind of a, a bowl. And so the ridge that forms the back of that bowl is some eight, nine, ten feet short of the hole here. It'd be tough to get the ball close. It was a 220-yard walk from the green at 16 to the tee at 17, and got a feel that Payne Stewart might have just floated up that hill. Drank a lot of water, though. Yeah. Say so he's hopped up because he's got a five iron. You the man! Well, that's three days in a row. But Payne Stewart has hit wonderful tee shots at this par three. Wonderful, Roger, but he's got a putt that yeah. he's got to be very, very careful with going down that hill. Give Scott's, anything to be that far below the hole. Scott has a, five, a four iron, excuse me, in his hand. was in play. Gosh, what a bad shot. What an awful time to hit that shot. Yeah, David, you made a point about Payne getting the tee at 17. He's hit good tee shots there the last couple days. This has been a hole that Scott has had some problems with. And this is, once again, this tee shot here at 17 for Scott Simpson. The pin cut to the right and his reaction after he hits the golf ball. Birdie time! Roger and I can tell you, that's just like someone hit you right in the stomach when you look up and see that shot.
Scott Simpson, who played the par 4 16th and four over par for five rounds, you have to wonder, coming off 16 with a two-shot swing, how that affected him, knowing that this par 3 has been a difficult hole, as has the 16th, and Payne Stewart with the honors, and putting, even though he does have a difficult putt, and we saw that same sort of putt yesterday, David, it's a very fast putt. The fact is that Payne was there. He was within 20 feet of the pin. And the resulting shot from Scott Simpson, which found that small pond. And this is what they're playing here for. Playing for what every United States golfer practices and plays for and works for, and not too many win. David, he has got to go to a place to play this next shot that uh, <laughs> is really something. It's up way to the left, up in the crowd. And uh, it's going to be terrible. It's going to catch a terrible lie up there. Although, if he drops it where he is standing, the ball is going to roll closer to the hole, so he may get to eventually place it. Well, he somehow got to figure out a way to get up there and make a four make pain, make three at this hole. Well, if he can make four here, uh, he is a magician, David, because this is a hard, hard shot. Well, you know what I'm saying. If he makes five... You got to move back some more. Mm. Grant Spaeth, the uh, president of the United States Golf Thank Association, you. out there with uh, Scott Simpson and Payne Stewart today. Actually, a little level spot up there. The ball settled all right. So far as the lie is concerned, it's good. Be the third shot for Scott Simpson. At this par three. shot oh boy that ball may not be stopped yet well every one of us who's ever played this game and has hit a ball in the water and had to take a drop and hit it over a short area like that and you know how nervous you are just playing with friends multiply it about a hundred thousand times and you'll know how Scott Simpson might have felt. Once again, the tee shot here at 17 by Scott Simpson. Up to me. Now, remember, he, he pull hooked the ball there. And on this shot, it looked to me as if he may have been lined up a little bit more at the right-hand bunker. Now, he usually plays very straight. You remember I said that? His yep. feet look a little to the right to me. And when you do that, if you aim too far to the right, you'll spin out. Now, a poor player will slice the ball with that sort of move. A good player, like Scott, if you spin out there, he's way left there, and look where the ball starts. A good player will pull or hook the ball, and he knows as soon as he's in that position there that it is gone. And possibly with it, the U.S. Open. Maybe. Now, Payne Stewart with this putt for birdie at 17. You said it was fast, David. He knew it was fast. It just wasn't quite as fast as either one of his fault. Now, Scott Simpson has this putt for bogey. And if he could run it in, it would make Payne Stewart's little downhiller that much more difficult. This is a putt that's really fast, David.
that's why he's playing for the United States Open Championship. Boy, that took a lot of nerve there. What man. a great, great four. Man, oh, man. A lesser player would just go ahead and make five and just give up. Now, Payne Stewart with this for par and a one-shot lead. They go to the 18th hole in the 18-hole playoff for the 91st United States Open Championship, and Payne Stewart leads Scott Simpson by one. Welcome you back. There's the trophy for the winner of the United States Open Championship. And it lays waiting at 18 for either Payne Stewart or Scott Simpson. And David, we go back one year and remember that in the playoff between Hale Irwin and Mike Donald, Mike Donald had a one-shot lead at 18. Well, so many things are running through their minds. I said, you know, Payne's won a major. Yes, he had won a tournament since uh, last year. He's never won an Open. Scott has. Yeah. Lots of things can run through your mind here. You've got to keep your mind on what you need to do. Just drive that ball in the fairway wind directly behind the players. Payne has an iron. Come in, Payne. That has found the fairway bunker to the right. Hole's playing so much different than it has the uh, past couple of days. You can knock it on the green out of that bunker, though, Roger, and that's the best angle to come from. Now, Scott Simpson. If they would, perchance, be even after this 18, they would just move back to the first hole and go from there. into the rough. Scott's caught a pretty good lie, and I believe Payne has a very playable lie in the bunker. Okay, Judy, thank you. So these two men, nerves a bit frayed, physically and mentally taxed at this moment as they come up 18, one will be the champion, and let's look back at past United States Open champions. Only 16 men have won two or more Opens. And that's what's one of them. John McDermott, first American born to win it. Walter Hagen. to win, John Goodman. And just think of all the great names in golf who you won't see come across this board. One that stands out, of course, Sam Snead. Wonderful player, never did win the U.S. Open. here. Yeah. 
Yeah. Hale Irwin, the three-time winner, and Jerry Pate. The hairdos through the years. Larry Nelson had a good tournament here this year. So did Fuzz. That was a great win at Shinnecock there. And Raymond finished strong here this year. And there's Scott Simpson who won at Olympic in 87. Curtis didn't make the cut this year. And that's the question. Who will it be in 1991? As we move out to the second shot, 17, Payne Stewart. Payne Excuse Stewart. Me, 18. I'm sorry, Bob. Payne Stewart, 205 yards from the hole. Good lie in the bunker. Wind blowing very hard behind him. Slightly out of his left, but I don't think it's going to make much difference. But it's very hard behind him. I would think that he could get a five or six iron to the hole right now. I, I think five would be the logical shot. And no problem with the bunker there, I mean, as far as lip or elevation is concerned, Bob? No, if he hits the ball solidly, David, he has no problem with that lip. Look back up to the green where the pin is cut. 37 paces back. 10 in from each side. 9,000 seats in the grandstands around 9 and 18. They are jammed, as is the fairway, at 18 and at 9. time to be sure it's right now. Big shot! Hit it very solidly. Rocky cut it just a little. And it has come to rest in that intermediate cut of rough. Short and right of the pin here at 18. Now Scott Simpson. Scott is 190 yards. Has a kind of a lie, Roger, that it's going to come out so hot that it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference what he hits it with. Uh, I think he could hit it with an eight iron and, and bounce it right on the front edge and, and get it up to the hole, but he may take a seven. But the ball is really going to come out very, very hot. A lot of overspin on it. David, it's an area that's been walked on quite a bit because there have been a number of people who have been back in that rough. And we can see the ball from our position. It seems to be sitting up, but there's a big tuft of grass right in front of it. It just doesn't have much grain to work with there either. Listen to these people, all of them standing, Roger.
Payne Stewart leads Scott Simpson by one. Both have a lot of work yet to go at 18 as this enormous crowd is gathered about. I think we finally got what we wanted. Stewart has made four pars at 18. Simpson, a birdie, two pars, and a bogey. Payne Stewart has a chip of about 70 feet. Even though it's coming uphill, it's going to be very fast coming out of that rough. About halfway up, it'll tend to flatten out. He's not going to fool much with the line. It's the distance that he wants to worry about. Stewart will have that putt for par. Scott's going to be hard pressed to land this ball on the green and be able to stop it out of this lie. Going to have a hard time getting the club underneath the ball. Plus it's a little downhill which is going to throw it out low and a little hotter than you want anyhow. That's right. Ideal shot David would be to pitch it onto that little fringe if he can land it there. couldn't do it. He had to hit it hard enough to get it out of the line. It just carried over that first cut of fringe. Carried over the fringe, David. The yeah. only chance he had was to play that shot. Ah, what a good second shot he played, too. A little unlucky there. Oh, we come down to this. Payne Stewart looking at a par putt. Scott Simpson has a par putt. Stewart with a one-shot lead. And Simpson's away. Scott Simpson makes a bogey at 16, a bogey at 17, and a bogey at 18. And now Payne Stewart has a lot of comfort in this short putt. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara. Today's telecast of the 18-hole playoff in the 91st U.S. Open was produced by Jack Graham, directed by Terry Jastrow. Technical directors Warner Gunther and Gary Larkins. Associate producer Ben Harvey, associate director Jaime Bravo. Technical operations managers Ed Delaney, Mike Farrell, Al Fong, Jim Lissetta, Mark Smith, and Mike Webb. Assistant to the producer Mitch Green and our editorial advisor Frank Hannigan.
Now, Payne Stewart, this putt for par. <laughs> and the win in the 91st United States Open. Payne Stewart from Springfield, Missouri, who now makes his home in Orlando, Florida. Wife and his daughter. Wife Tracy. A few months ago, he didn't know whether he'd ever be able to play again. He's off the tour for 10 weeks. Let's go to Bob Rosberg. Okay, Bob. Payne, a tremendous comeback on one of the hardest golf courses you've probably ever seen today. Frosty, I don't know what to say. Pretty excited. A little bigger than the first one, even, huh, at the PGA? Quite a bit, I think. Um, just, the, just the way that... It was earned today, you know. I, I just kept on plugging and finally made a birdie out there on 16, and you know that helped quite a bit. You had some great shots yesterday coming down the stretch. You couldn't make one, and then today you finally made the one at 16. But you hit some wonderful shots. Aside from that, thank you very much. I, like I said, I'm very excited, as you can tell. May there be many more, Payne. Thank you very much. Let's go back to Roger Twyble. Okay, Bob. Thank you very much. Well. That's Cheryl Simpson, Scott's wife. So a former United States Open champion loses to Payne Stewart, who wins this 1991 United States Open. And an emotional victory in an 18-hole playoff for all of us here at ABC. Bob Rosberg, Judy Rankin, David Marr. I'm Roger Twyville. Thanks for being with us.